Okay, lesson seven. Now we get to teach and learn. Uh, we're either teaching or we're learning or we're doing both, right? And uh, now we're getting to the fun part of family school, why you've done all the things you've done up to this point. And this is the, uh, the, the exciting thing that you get to do each day in your home. And it's a special experience. And I'm gonna give you a few tips um, that I've learned from families, from thousands of families over the last eight years as I've worked with them. Uh, and taught these lessons with my own family, to my own children, uh, that may be helpful to you. Everybody teaches differently, and I think to start off this demonstration, it's important to recognize that, uh, that there's no one way to teach. Uh, we try to incorporate a lot of different methods, a lot of different ideas, a lot of different philosophies of teaching, uh, but certainly don't get hung up on the fact that there are words on the page. Um, some families who look at this feel like it's regurgitating information. And if you feel that way, then don't teach that way. Just have pre-read the lesson so that you can teach the way that you feel comfortable teaching. Uh, the words are on the page and they're scripted in first person so that, um, so that you don't have to prepare if you don't have the time to prepare. And if you really just need the words and they're right there in front of you, you can use it that way as well. And there's no, there's no harm in that. Um, there's no problem with that. And so we've prepared it for the mother who, and the father, I keep saying mother because most of the, most of our teachers are mothers, but we do have some fathers that, that teach family school lesson plans as well. But they're taught, they're, they're prepared in a way that would allow you to, to, uh, to pick it up and to run with it without having to take a lot of time to prepare. Whether you, um, you use it like an outline or whether you use it word for word, it's just fine. The goal is to, 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 to make the learning fun. And you'll see throughout this lesson how that learning is uh, more than just you, um, you sharing information with them, which is okay too. But we've tried to include as many activities and, and um, handouts and, um, and things like that in the lesson plan that make it exciting and, and visuals, lots of videos, lots of, lots of images. Uh, we're at uh, the top of lesson five, insects characteristics in zoology. And you can see that I've, I've selected this deep dive version. I wanted to show you something here uh, that might be helpful as you teach a lesson and even maybe I'll prepare a little bit too. I probably should have covered this in the last demonstration, it could at least give you this example. But as we get into the lesson, it first starts with the desired result. This is kind of a combination of the academic concepts that we're teaching in the gospel principle. The children will recognize that insects are one type of anthropod and will describe their specific characteristics. They will also recognize that Heavenly Father values variety in all of his creations. And so if you look at these academic concepts and look at this gospel principle that relate to this academic experience or these academics, you'll see kind of a, a repeat of that in the desired result. Review. This is a suggestion that we have at the start of each lesson, maybe review some of the flashcards from this subject's previous lessons. It's a good time to do that at the beginning of a lesson before it started. But the lesson actually doesn't begin until this attention activity. And you can see a big difference between this attention activity in the deep dive version and the attention activity in the open and go version. It just kind of reiterates what I said in the last uh, demonstration of, of how these two uh, versions are differentiated and how they're unique. In this attention activity, you're clicking, you're using this, um, this handout. And like I said, in the, in, the, um, in the open and go version, we've tried to reduce the number of handouts that are, that are needed so there is even less preparation, there's less printing involved. But in this deep dive version, we've created this fun handout where you'll print these out on cardstock potential and you'll cut out cards and you'll have the anthropod cards. And then the activity is, um, giving them about three minutes to look through the pictures and sort them. And you don't tell them how to sort them. You just let them sort them however they would like. And then at the end of that three minutes, you ask them to tell you why they sorted them the way they did. And of course, there is a specific way that we would sort them, but we just want to see how they would sort them. And it's just a fun activity. They might just sort them by things that crawl or things that fly or things that have exoskeletons and um, anyway, uh, things that live in water. There's a number of ways that you could or land and things that, and, and there's, so there's a number of ways that they could sort them and, and none of them are wrong. Um, and then we go into this insects are one class of anthropod. But before we do that, I wanna show you what the open and go version looks like for this activity. It's a similar activity, but instead of using the handout, 
they use the picture. And that's why we have the picture there. And this one, it just says, what are some ways these animals are similar? And so you would show them that picture from your screen instead of giving them cards and asking them to sort through them. But you may want to, you may want to teach a shorter lesson, but you really love that activity with the cards. And so you do that one. And so you can blend those two. It's nice in the preparation stage to read through both of those lessons because you may find that there's something from the deep dive version that you really want to include in your open and go lesson that day. And that's just fine. They're all resources for you to use however you want to, to use them. Um, okay. Also, I should, note, I should just point out uh, another really important um, tip that we give families, especially as they're getting started, uh, is that just because it's on here, on, on, in this lesson, doesn't mean you have to teach it. And so you can cut out and chop up anything that you would like to. In fact, if you get to a part where you just think, I just wanna focus in on this one question, then you have this option where you can toggle this edit bar over and you can click on edit, and that whole research section becomes editable to you. And so you might wanna just delete that content and just go directly to that question and you'll keep the video and you'll talk, you'll speak to the video and just quickly make this more of a bullet point lesson that maybe that's more helpful to you and you can save it. And then your uh, edits are, are, are live right there for you and just for you, they're specific to your user account. So you're not changing anything for anybody, any other family school members, it's just something specific for you. Now, another thing that's pretty awesome in these lessons, and again, I should have brought this up in the plan and prepare, so I apologize. I'm not gonna go back and redo that video just to show you this. So I'm gonna show it to you here. If while you're planning and preparing, you see that there's some content here in, in this lesson that applies to um, someone else that could, that, could, that could contribute to this lesson plan. Maybe you have somebody in your ward or your neighborhood, or maybe you have a parent or friend who, who has something you feel that they could share in this lesson plan that has to do with the research or the, or the gospel principle, and you want their testimony. You want to send this off to dad and say, hey, dad's working at work right now, but we want his input on this, on this topic. You can click on this Invite a Guest app. Tons of fun. This is a pretty cool app. I'm, I have to say, <laughs> this is awesome. All you have to do is type in uh, cell phone of anybody who you want to contribute. Let's say this is dad and he's at work and, and you can send him a message that just says, hey, hey honey, can you, I don't know if I uh, capitalize that, can you share your thoughts on for our family school lesson today? All you have to do is give him some kind of instruction. It's going to send this text to him that's his text right there, right? It's got to be their cell phone because it's going to pull up their video camera when they click on that link on their phone. You send that invitation to them, and I've just sent it to me so I can show you what happens here. Oh, boy. I had turned my phone off because I didn't want to be interrupted in this, um, this demo. I'm going to turn it on quickly, and I'll show you that. Anyway, this text right here will go to my cell phone, well, Caroline Ingalls' cell phone, right? And with this link, and all they have to do is click on that link, and it's going to pull up this on their cell phone, this little prompt here from a service called Video Peel that we integrate with. And it's going to say the exact same thing. It's going to pull my picture there. And so they'll see my picture and uh, they'll see this prompt that says, hey, honey, can you share your thoughts on XYZ for our family school lesson today? All they have to do is click from their phone this little button right here. And it will either, it knows that I'm on my computer. And so it says upload a video. But if you pull that up on your phone, and there's the and there's the text that I just received. Caroline Ingalls is requesting your help with a lesson from Family School. Click this link to help. All I have to do is click that, and it pulls up the same thing that you're looking at, but on my phone. And if I click on record and upload, and I say take video, now it has. I can just record a quick video here. Let's go ahead and do it just for an example. We're going to do like a three-second video. You all see that? We'll stop and we we'll play use video. I agree to the terms. I send it. It says, thank you for your submission. Click off of it. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so excited about this application, but this makes family school more than just family school in your home. It makes family school anyone who you want to involve in your family school lesson plan that day. If you want to 
invite someone from China into your lesson that day, you can. So family school extends well outside the walls of your home. Heaven knows you need a guest speaker now and then uh, as well. I mean, we use guest speakers here on campus in classrooms and, um, and now you have access to a tool that allows you to do the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and refresh, refresh this lesson because it's probably there. You're actually gonna get an email when the contributor that you've emailed has submitted the video. You're gonna get an email that says, hey, so-and-so submitted an email or submitted a video to your lesson uh, if you wanna have a look at it. And looky there, there it is. There's the video that we just took. In three simple steps, we have a contribution from three second video. You all see that? <laughs> anyway, that's pretty fun stuff. So think outside of your, um, out of your own home. I mean, it doesn't need to be you uh, teaching that entire lesson. It can be your kids that you text and, uh, and have them help. It can be a missionary. Uh, who you have out in the field and you want to get their feelings on something and they can text you back now, which is pretty awesome. Uh, not text you back, but contribute that way um, on their P-Day, of course, right? Anyway, um, family school is, is always growing, always changing. We continue to add fun applications that extend the, um, the uh, ability to reach your children through technology in pretty powerful ways. Okay, back to this lesson. So you're teaching this research lesson. The first concept is insects are one class of anthropods. And you've edited this lesson, so it's a little bit um, more condensed. And throughout the lesson, we try to include images as much as possible. So you see, see we're studying this uh, type of invertebrate, an anthropod. And there's an example of one. There's some more questions. Questions will always be outlined by bullet. So anytime you see a bullet, that's a question. Anytime you see um, italics, that's not script, that's instruction to you and it will always be set off by this arrow. And so anytime you see the arrow, just know you're going into something that's instruction for you as the teacher. Show the pictures on uh, crustacean characteristics and you can click that on, you can, you can open that up and you can see that. Uh, this is the original lesson plan or the deep dive version and so it uses this handout, but I guarantee you if we went back to the open and go version and we went down to this section, it would just be right here. So it's just pulling pictures out and talking about those pictures right there in the lesson plan so we don't need the handout. Research two, insects have specific characteristics. Scientists who study insects are called entomologists. You are going to be an entomologist today during the next few lessons. Can you say entomologist? The first thing you need to know as an entomologist is how to recognize what is an insect and what is not. And so you see the words are there. Uh, I don't need to say it that way. I could just speak to it if I want to. I can look over that quickly and I can just talk about it or I can actually read it. A lot of families have an iPad and so they're right there with their children. They have an iPad and when they have an image on the, uh, in the lesson, they'll just turn it around and show their children, kind of like I just did barely with my phone. Uh, and then we go through this research section and we get to the reasoning section, which is where we're getting to the stuff that I really love, especially at this age. Um, We've had this wonderful lesson about anthropods and their unique characteristics. And now the question is, what are some insects you've seen before? Encourage all children to respond. Do they all look the same? No, we're leading right into a gospel's principle. Even though they are all insects, the Lord created them to look different and to do different things. Let's look at a variety of insects. So again, we look at some pictures of some insects, a lot of vis visual here in this lesson. Heavenly Father and Jesus created each insect each insect to live successfully in its habitat. Colors, sizes, wings, etc., have been provided for protection to help them get food and to help them identify each other. Why do you think Heavenly Father made so many different kinds of insects? You see, these are all reasoning questions. You're asking them to try to, to, try to think about the academics in context of, of Heavenly Father's plan, Heavenly Father's world, uh, their, uh, not their own lives, that's the next section, but some gospel principle. When Heavenly Father and Jesus created the earth, they made many different kinds of plants, animals, and people to add beauty and variety to the earth. Let's read a quote from Elder Joseph E. Worthling. All of Heavenly Father's children are different in some degree, yet each has his own beauty that adds depth and richness to the whole. The variety of creation itself is a testament of how the Lord values all of his children. This is just a wonderful quote that ties it all in together. And, and that's the end. It's simple. It's short. It's, it's pure. Um, doctrine um, for them to learn 
in their way at their age, appropriate for their age, I should say. The next section is probably my favorite, and it's always a simple connection to them uh, and their lives and how this affects them. In what ways does our family have variety? They can have a discussion about that. And then they're connecting it to them, to their family, to their lives. Just as we find great variety in the family, there is also great variety in the colors, sizes, and shapes of insects. Heavenly Father values variety. That's a family school lesson plan, and it's beautiful. And you can have those experiences every day. I love them, and uh, I've seen their, the benefit of this kind of teaching here on campus at American Heritage School because my children have been able to attend here, uh, but also through American Heritage Worldwide using the family school in my home. And not just for um, homeschool lesson plans. We're all homeschoolers, right? but for many other opportunities as we have discussions around the dinner table, as we're driving from, uh, from home to soccer practice or for on a vacation uh, somewhere um, for family nights. I've used these lessons in uh, Sunday school. I've used these lessons in my teacher's quorum. And so you'll find um, other applications than just um, traditional homeschooling. And, um, and we hope that you do and that, that your family's blessed the same way mine has and, and, and thousands and thousands, literally tens of thousands of other children around the world in over 80 countries now. It's been a really exciting thing to see happen here at the school. And it's basically our gift to the world. Uh, American Heritage School is a nonprofit. It's important to note that, that all the things that we've done here, we've done for impact, for mission impact. And, and that mission is really important to the school and something that's been the bedrock of all that we do from 1970, um, when a uh, year after Brigham Young Academy closed down to, to uh, next year when it will be the 50 year anniversary of the school. Sorry, I went on a little tangent there. And sorry for the length of this demo, but I wanted it to be more than just a demonstration of what you do, but why you do it that way and how you go about doing it. And uh, hopefully that's been helpful to you. Uh, there is one last step in the teaching process. We had plan and prepare, we had teach and learn, and the next one is record and share. And that's what we do here in the next step, record and share. It's the final R of 4Ring, and it's a really, really important one and a fun one.